Hello again. Today I thought we would talk just a little bit about the fly press and some modifications I want to do to my work holding ability under the fly press. At some point I put this piece of half inch plate on my fly press. It makes a much larger, flatter surface to work on instead of the sort of oddball shaped base of the fly press. And this works pretty good. It allows me to clamp a fence across the back of it. And I'll show you how that works before the end of the video, I think. And just has a, a big surface to set jigs and tools and things that you're working on. It's a good flat surface to pile junk when you're not using the fly press, which is one of its downsides. But in general, I like the idea of the flat table. What I don't like about it is that there's no work holding in the middle. To hold a bottom die of some sort in here, I use these little clamping arms. And they are pretty easy to put on here and clamp down to the table with a pair of vice grips. Pardon me while I step in front of the camera. And that's not bad. That holds that fairly well, but not great. It's pretty easy to knock a tool out of place because all the pressure of the clamp is clear back here and I can't get a clamp in here because the fly press base is in the way. And as I said, it's pretty easy to put a fence on this and clamp it right to the ends. That holds very solidly and if you're chiseling a groove down a bar this makes a great lineup just like using a fence on a table saw. I have also made a die holder that is very similar to what I use under the hydraulic press that can clamp to both ends and that makes this holder stay put pretty well but unfortunately there's enough flex even in this half inch plate if I am punching that when the punch pulls up against the stripper with the bar stuck to it, this plate bows up in the air and pops and snaps and it starts to work loose and it really doesn't work as well as I thought it would. So what's my idea? Now the original base for the fly press has T-slots in it and that works pretty well. T-slots are way more secure, they're adjustable in and out and you can put all sorts of different clamps in the T-slots. So the other day I took a can of spray paint and I sprayed up under here through the T-slots and hopefully I can find a nice paint mark where the T-slots are and I'm going to transfer those through my table and have T-slots in the top. You also notice I've got a hole in here so if I'm punching something all the way through or need to drift all the way through I can turn this plate around and it bolts into the top either direction. So my next task then is to take this off and of course the uh, Allen head screws that are in here are all full of crud so I gotta clean those out first. So I'll see you in a few minutes when I get this off of here. Plate is loose and it is every bit as heavy as I thought it would be. You can see the original base for the fly press it has threaded holes for some clamping and it's got the T-slots in it. And I think both of those things have some use and would be good up top. But I can find my, uh, my marks and some silver pencil marks I put in there to show me where to go. So I got something I can cut to here. This is what the base of the fly press looks like with the plate off. It's a much smaller base and it doesn't really work very well with a fence and it wouldn't be that big a deal to take this plate off to reuse all of this stuff but if I can keep the plate on I just think it's a more useful machine. So the first thing I want to know is how far in do I need to cut my T-slots and that looks like five and a half inches so I think I will transfer that measurement to my big plate. Now this is something I suspect most of you don't want to sit and watch so we aren't going to do much of this. My paint mark actually pretty much goes right to the end, so the spray paint idea worked out very well. So I have to cut all of this out and all of this out 
and then I'm going to need enough room on this end to get my T-bolt inserted, although I could disassemble the bolt if I needed to, but it'd be easier to, to have room to insert it, so let me find a, a T-nut. Luckily the same size T-nuts I use on the marble saw are just exactly right, so if I come bring my slot out to here, I have enough space that I'll be able to insert the T-nut up from the bottom and make that work just fine. And the reason I'm not going to go all the way out is I don't want to lose the support. I don't want my table to start to shift up and down. And this is going to still leave me with almost two inches of solid half inch plate on each end. And I think that's going to work out just fine. And I'm not going to bother to do this on this side because I think if I'm using that I might not care about this. But we'll see. I might have to take it back off and change it at some point. So my next task is going to be to cut these out and that's the part I'm pretty much not going to make you watch too much of. I'll show you what I got in mind but after that I think I'll turn the camera off. Now this is where a plasma cutter or a friend in the water jet business would be really nice. You could cut this with a torch. I chose not to because I think there would be more cleanup involved with a torch cut than what there will be using a cutoff wheel and a grinder. I'll probably go through three or four wheels before I'm done with this, but I think I'll end up with a much cleaner, neater cut in the long run, so that's what I'm going to do. Personally, that's the first time I've ever used a two-handed hacksaw, but the disc grinder would not quite get right up to the edge cleanly, and I didn't want to overcut. So, bending up a hacksaw blade in the process, small price to pay. Now, speaking of a price to pay, this probably was not the best way to approach this. I thought it might be a little too expensive to take it to town to the place that would water jet cut it. I guess it would have probably cost about $100. Unfortunately, it was way too much for my angle grinders. I bought this pair of angle grinders at an after Christmas sale six months ago, and I burned both of them up doing this. Now, I paid right at $100 for this pair of angle grinders. It was a great deal. In retrospect, Maybe it wasn't such a great deal because maybe they weren't the best grinders in the world. So it's about the same amount of money as I would have spent having it water jet cut. And to have them water jet cut, I would have had to drive to town, which is about a two hour round trip by the time you go to the shop and talk to them and negotiate and get everything settled. You come back home and then you got to go back in and pick it up a few days later in exchange for my time to spend doing it here. So it's kind of a wash either way, except that if I had done that, I'd still have two angle grinders. 
Now in the previous six months since I've owned those, I've gotten a fair amount of use out of them. So this isn't the only thing they've done. So I can kind of prorate what I've lost. But in either case, it was really abusive to the tools and I don't like abusing tools. So this probably wasn't the best way to do it. Now I'm going to finish it up with a file and it's going to take me a few more hours probably. So if I could go back in time, I think I would spend the time and the money to have it water jet cut. It would have been less hassle, maybe a little more time, about the same money. But you can take that for what it's worth. Just be aware that trying to cut thick plate with a cut off disc and an angle grinder is probably not the best idea. And I kind of knew there was that risk when I went into it. On the other hand, I didn't get halfway through with those two Makita angle grinders. I only got one slot most of the way cut. I didn't even get the second slot cut. I finished the first slot and all of the second slot with my 20 year old Craftsman angle grinder. The two I burned up are seven and a half amp grinders. This is only a six amp grinder. It's a cheaper grinder. I've never really liked it anyways. I wasn't worried about burning it up. It's got a weird switch on it that it's always hard to get engaged. You kind of got to do a little dance with your fingers to get the switch to go on just right. So I wasn't going to worry about it if I burn this one up. I wouldn't mind replacing it. But this one survived just fine. It's still usable. It doesn't show any signs of wear. It didn't overheat. The other two had green smoke coming out the vents. So I think my bargain Christmas buy or after Christmas sale buy was you get what you pay for. And I got a screaming deal on two grinders and I got nowhere near the use out of them I should have. I will replace those, but I'll replace them with 11 amp grinders and probably Milwaukee's because I really like the Milwaukee tools these days. But in the meantime, I'm back to filing and I'll meet you again right here when I get done. Well, that job wasn't as bad as I thought it might be. This brand new, big, heavy square file did a really nice job. It's a coarse file. And that only took about a half an hour to clean up these slots. But in addition to the slots for the T-nuts, which will just come up through here, I want to put some holes so I can actually put studs in if need be. And this idea comes from Rigoni, Rigoni? I'm not sure how to pronounce that, sorry. Ironworks, or Joni Ironworks. And he's got a channel. Doesn't post a lot of videos. He's in the middle of building a whole new shop right now. But he has the most spectacular tooling for fly press and power hammer and does impeccable work. One of the cleanest shops you'll ever see. It's almost uh, sick, so to speak, because it's so clean. But I really admire his stuff. And he's got his fly press table set up with holes for studs so he can clamp things just about anywhere he wants them. So I'm going to lay this out, get all the dust off from grinding and filing. And I'm just going to put a few parallel lines on here and then come up with a hole pattern. I think I'm going to put a row centered on my other mounting bolts here, although I don't know that I will drill as many holes there. But I could also use these bolts. I could take the mounting screws off, and if I don't take them all off and replace it with a clamp system, it would still be pretty darn useful. I see no reason to put anything here because this is where the tooling will always sit, right in that center spot. So with these four lines, I'll divide that up and put a nice grid work of some kind of screw holes. Lay out center. And I think I'm going to stagger my holes here so these outer rows are a little bit different than the inner rows. And hopefully that way I'll have lots and lots of options.
Well now comes the fun part, trying to hold this thing on the drill press table while I drill all these little holes. I could drill them by hand, but it would take a lot longer and the odds of them being straight or slim. A magnetic drill press or a mag drill would be the ideal solution, but I don't own one of those. Now wouldn't you know it, I could get to all but one hole under the drill press. Next let's knock the sharp edges off all these. Well we've got all these drilled to 27 64ths, which is the right size for a half 13 tap. And now I've got to tap all these holes so they're actually useful. But that shouldn't take too long. Well that's 14 holes drilled, deburred, and threaded. This should make life much better. Now it's time to put the thing back up on the fly press. It's all back together. And this then should allow me to put T-nuts in so I can slide these clamps wherever I need them and clamp them down. And I've got a, if you're not familiar with clamps like this and T-nuts, you can get much longer bolts so if this bolt isn't tall enough. But the T-nut just slides in a slot down there and the stud sticks up out of the, the table and I can clamp something anywhere in this travel range that the T-nut will go. But I'm going to need to get some other clamps and some smaller bolts for all these little holes because these are half inch and these are I think 9 sixteenths or maybe even 5 eighths bolts. I'd have to double check them to make sure but I'm, for these I'll use a little bit smaller clamp system but these will be the big guns when I need them. Well that's the end of this part of the project, but why was I worried about being able to clamp things down? Well I don't use the fly press as much as I should and one of the reasons is that I didn't have a good way to secure the really nice tooling that I would like to see under the fly press. And now I can secure it, it will stay put and that makes this ideal for repetitive tasks. One of the things I need to do is make a whole bunch of bottle openers and again I'm going to borrow an idea from Rajoni Ironworks and his little fly press punch. It won't look exactly like his because my bottle openers don't look exactly like his but the concept is a really good concept and I think I can make something that will work way better and being sure that the bottom die stays in perfect alignment with the punch is critical and it's real easy without a good clamping system with just using those vice grips and these clamp bars it was very easy for things to get out of adjustment and that's a real problem. With this I don't think I'm going to have a problem. I didn't do the front half of the table. I haven't used anything through this hole to drift or punch through this in probably 10 years. The only thing I've ever used that for is to broach a square hole and a broach is a cutter that goes through a round hole and leaves a square hole by the time it's done and I don't do that very often so I don't think I need these holes and slots in the front of the table. If I ever do I know how to do that. Now clearly this project was not without a little bit of uh, disappointment specifically the two angle grinder failures and in hindsight I would probably take this into town and spend the three four hours and the hundred dollars that it would take to have somebody else do that. It's really kind of a wash because I'm out a hundred dollars for two angle grinders and I'm out about three or four hours of my time to cut those slots by myself. So it's really the same dollar amount, it's still the same amount of time spent. So I don't know that it matters too much. I, I just don't like the idea of ruining tools so it would have been better to do that. 
but the fact is we got it done we're not really any money behind I can replace those tools life goes on and I have a much better tool in my fly press and in the long run that's worth it a few months from now I won't even remember about those grinders hardly and when I'm punching bottle openers to fulfill all of my Patreon obligations that I'm behind on because I've got about two dozen bottle openers I need to make this is really going to pay off and not just for that that's just one example there are so many other things that I would be doing under the fly press if I could keep things anchored well enough now I can I really look forward to using this a few more things I have to do though one all of these holes are going to collect crud that's just the sad nature of a hole in a plate like this they don't go all the way through except for the very outer ones the rest of these do not go all the way through so I'm going to get some little half inch set screws and I'm going to plug these holes and then all I got to do is clean out the the Allen wrench recess to get it out and the threads won't get all gummed up and the plugs will help protect all that the other thing I need to get some more clamps of some sort that are more sized for what I need on this and then I'll have more options these I had to borrow off the marble saw and I don't think in the long run I want to always be stealing stuff off the marble saw to serve this tool it's better to have the same kind of clamps in both places if you can afford them so that's really it hope that was interesting I realize this is not a project you're probably looking to tackle in your shop at least most of you aren't but if you have a fly press this might give you some ideas I can still put a fence on the back I can still clamp up using the vice grips I still have plenty of space so longer bars are less likely to tip and fall off the fly press while I'm getting things lined up all in all I really like the table better than the fly press base and now it is more useful and more functional than it was and more useful and more functional than the original base on the fly press allowed for it's a win-win situation no matter how I look at it so I'm going to get back to work I hope you can get out to your shop I hope you can get something accomplished today but do stay safe do wear your safety glasses and we will see you for the next one